yeah so the recording has also started and uh, screen share this the guy as well nine the same this nice sir just a moment Okay, I think now you should be in a position to check the screen. And yes, uh, yeah, this is something that we spoke about yesterday as well. That uh, though weather forecasting at the end point is a very simple procedure to, uh, to, to imagine. However, you see that technically it leads to many, many uh, steps and procedures. Okay, right from uh, recording the various parameters of uh, the weather around uh, to collecting them at a particular point and having collecting collected them at a particular point you have to transmit them at uh, uh, stations or sub centers where it could be uh, put for uh, say say it, it could be uh, put for further analysis as such now this Transmitted data which arrives at a center or a sub-center from various sources needs to be compiled in the respective, say for example, you are looking at the temperature part of it or you are looking at the pressure part of it, you are looking at the cloud part of it, you are looking at the, uh, say, say uh, rainfall part of it, say rainfall in the Indian subcontinent or rainfall only in, the, uh, in, in, in India or southern India. So you have to decide uh, as, as per uh, what set of compilation would you be uh, requiring as such. And then plotting of weather data on maps and uh, uh, say uh, other issues. And of course, then analysis. Okay? Because you need to give a, a, a forecast, you first have to analyze it at your end. And then, of course, it leads to the final forecasting uh, which in fact would again as i said would have its spatial parameters it would have its temporal parameters spatial in the sense from a local to a regional to a state or a national or in fact a uh, world level and uh, as far as temporal is concerned from a few hours to uh, let us say a few days or a few weeks months a season or annual or in fact multiple cycles uh, as well as such so uh, data has become a very important part as far as weather forecasting is concerned. Having said that, uh, use of technology in data is equally important. I would say uh, the sheer fact being that uh, yesterday we spoke about this fact that uh, as far as human beings are concerned, you'll see that the energy of human beings, the precision of human beings could have its limitations, which uh, robo robotics would not. And that's why use of technology becomes important here as such. Uh, there could be human errors uh, which can be avoided when we use machines as such but having said that machines also could have their errors and that is why validation is very important uh, say for example if uh, uh, say say the forecast says that tomorrow it is going to be raining heavily in pune at some point of time we need to check whether it has actually rained heavily in pune or not that is called as data validation Unless and until you validate your data, you cannot confirm that your model that you had uh, prepared to uh, to forecast that there is going to be heavy rainfall in Pune tomorrow is right or wrong as such. Okay, and then you take it to further precision okay, that the heavy rainfall is going to be early morning or late afternoon or late evening and so on and so forth. So uh, this all involves and in fact, uh, uh, you need to be very sound with the basics. Okay, and then you come to these aspects as such. Well. Uh, we started, we had rather start, introduced ourselves to the tools and technology as far as weather forecasting is concerned. And when we speak about the instruments involved in them as such, okay, you'll see that uh, you have uh, the, say, whatever you call as meter is the count of it. And when we plot on it, okay, you call it as a graph as such. Well. Okay, so thermometer is obviously going to be an instrument uh, which is going to be uh, used as far as uh, measuring the intensity of temperature is concerned. When you plot it, you're going to get a thermograph. Okay, barometer is obviously going to measure the pressure gradient or the pressure at a, at a, uh, a particular area and you plot that pressure 
that is going to be a barograph and hygrometer of course anybody knows what is hygrometer any idea what is hygrometer hygro hygro meter is measurement instrument used to measure hygro means tybl or hota na re tumhara climatic instruments हेलो ऐकू ये ना सगैं हेलो ऑडिबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट फॉर मेजरिंग ह्यूमिडिटी यस हाइग्रोमीटर इज यूज्ड फॉर मेजरिंग ह्यूमिडिटी एस के देन यू हैव गॉजेस के अ वेरी पॉप्युलर गॉज वी नो अबाउट इज अ रेन गॉज ते भंड पाउस गोला करो अपन मोजमाप के दिस इज एज फार एज कलेक्टिंग डेटा is concerned as such as far as transmission of data is concerned you'll see that technology has moved from those old type of phones to uh, telegraph here they used to transfer information in that particular way to an extent that now you have use of satellites and radars as far as uh, transferring information uh, is concerned as well as such. as far as advanced instruments are concerned uh, this is one of the first things that tends to be uh, used as such and these is called this this process is called as radio sonding now what is radio sonding it is a battery powered telemetry instrument it's carried into the atmosphere uh, i would say into the atmosphere he me google var na getlela hai i would say in the troposphere only since we are doing this at a a uh, uh, a post graduate level let us be precise about where it should be and why i am saying this i am coming to that as such okay when i am going to read any any layman is going to read uh, what is a radio sound on google then of course he she may not understand what is troposphere so google will make or wikipedia will put uh, atmosphere here however as far as students who have already done the layers of atmosphere is concerned Uh, uh we need to understand and note that uh, radio sonding is done for the troposphere only the reason that it is done for the troposphere is obviously you'll see that why does a balloon go up atta paryanta apan ji theory keleli ahe can you give me an idea as to why is that balloon going to go up atta paryanta jevda climatology kelela ahe thoda sa vichar karaycha आणि हा बलून जो आपल्याला पहिल्या चित्रामध्ये त्या व्यक्तीने धरलेला आहे आणि मला वाटतं चौथ्या चित्रामध्ये तो आपल्याला वर जाताना दिसतोय वाय शुड इट गो अपर आर गोइंग टू बी टू बेसिक रिझन देर इज वन बेसिक रिझन एंड देन इट टू फॉलो इन टू या प्लीज येस बिकॉज त्यात गॅस असते आणि गॅस हे हलकं असते आणि मग ह्याच्या आजूबाजूला गॅस नाही म्हणायचं तुला ह्याच्या आजूबाजूला गॅस नाही मग गॅस लो डेन्सिटी ओके आय वुड से पार्शली राईट वॉट मोर कॅन यू से की ऑल द गॅस अराउंड दिस बलून इज अ मिक्सचर राईट वॉट यू for say force into this balloon is actually helium okay helium is going to be much much lighter gas as compared to other now if you are going to force in a lighter force in a light gas uh, in in this particular balloon what geographical or what atmospheric phenomena takes place you see that the gas within it okay now if i am to draw what we had said earlier or rather what we had done earlier of uh, stability and unstability okay and when i started explaining to you i said that this is going to be the uh, say say the amount of air and when it goes up okay its volume is going to increase something related to that should happen with helium as well or not what is your answer what do you think something similar will happen or not yes sir exactly something very similar to that is going to happen you are going to pack up molecules of helium in a uh, in an object which is which is keeping it separated outside from from outside air that makes helium uh, unstable like we spoke about absolute stability instability and so on and so forth so helium starts going up okay it will keep on going up till the point 
that its temperature obviously is going to be or its its density is going to be lesser than the uh, say the air around as it goes up what happens is the size of this balloon keeps on increasing because of the release of pressure baharcha je pressure ahe te balloon cha surface var i have seen this process aple ikle iitm ahe ke iitm stands for anyone any idea aun road la ahe aun pashan road la iitm indian institute of tropical metrology Every Wednesday, one o'clock. जब तुम्ही आज जायची गरज नहीं, बाहर जरी उबर आए लग. Every Wednesday, one o'clock, they let loose one radio song. We were told I was doing a workshop with these people around three years ago. एका radio sounding सा खर्च सा पन्ना सासर उठ गया. एका radio sounding. So they do it every uh, say uh, Wednesday, as I said. And the uh, balloons also. That balloon is made up of latex, which is the most pure form of rubber. And because of that, while the balloon goes up, it starts expanding because of the loss of pressure outside. So you see that it starts increasing in size. Originally, the balloon already is about one meter in diameter. Okay, and as it goes up, 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 up all the way, it keeps on going larger, larger, larger. At some point, it will actually burst because not because of the difference in pressure, but basically because the latex is not able to hold on. the difference in pressure as far as interior of the balloon is concerned and outside the balloon is concerned or it will travel all the way to the tropopause tropopause cha var janar nahi okay it travels to the tropopause and from there it will fall down okay now it so happens that at the base of this balloon you will have uh, this particular thing which is attached okay this is actually uh, say it is it is fit with many things okay we can see a few things temperature sensor is one humidity sensor is there and of course then this is a string this is that string okay this string okay you are going to attach it all the way here and then you are going to let it loose it goes up here and while it keeps on traveling up okay you will see that it keeps on transmitting information okay what information as i said temperature humidity Uh, pressure, all these. Okay, it will depend on how precise your instrument and how intensive instrument or a uh, 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 telemetry instrument that you have attached to uh, this as such. Okay, radio sounding is is uh, this. Okay, uh, one of the first processes I would rather say uh, to actually being brought into uh, modeling of uh, weather forecasting as such. Okay. Uh, Uh, of course radio sounding had its limitations and then technology had to go ahead but at the same time radio sounding has its advantage and because of that you'll see that with the most modern type of uh, uh, weather sensing uh, or weather forecasting methodology you, you you practice one of the most crude forms that is radio sounding also so you'll see that these uh, technology and these instruments go uh, rather hand in hand as well okay then you we'll see that uh, you have uh, radars now what is a radar you'll we'll see that uh, uh, if you have at any point of time uh, gone into the long form radar by the way it's not its own term it's it's an abbreviation okay this is how a radar looks like and uh, this is how it tends to sense okay it sends out signals and it tracks okay? it's it, and of course this is a point wherein you will have the radar placed and it is going to send out uh, waves of a peculiar frequency uh, and it's obviously going to move uh, 360 and in that 360 you are you should be able to track okay you see that uh, uh, this is transmitted pulse of electromagnetic waves okay so you see that it will say for example you have to look whether it is raining at a particular distance or not this is how it is going to send electromagnetic waves they will sense this and then you have are going to have an echo of that that echo is collected and that is how maps are generated on radars as such okay where all are radars used okay nowadays of course it is so very uh, common to what we have already done but uh, you see that now now what they are doing is uh, uh, they are looking into various aspects as okay radars are uh, used in the energy sector okay to check where wind speed is there to me manal energy sector how okay you see where wind speed is there or where you going to have a larger amount of solar sunshine you can set up your wind power plants or uh, solar power plants also so direct and indirect implication of weather forecasting uh, is done as well then of course water management 
in the sense where you should be in a position to construct a dam how much of water should be uh, able available for a particular uh, uh, behind a particular dam wall and how much are you going to let loose as far as uh, these are concerned this is as far as water treatment is concerned radars are used in uh, uh, disaster prevention mitigation also right from floods normal floods to urban floods is something which is on a rise nowadays okay and uh, you will see that landslides etc are also an important part of uh, uh, these radar tracking as such operations management you will see that it is nowadays used in logistics uh, plant monitoring, manufacturing control, and of course other controls as such. Traffic control is nowadays used through uh, radars as such. Okay, farming, agriculture tends to use it. Okay, you use it in uh, leisure times also. Uh, meteorological observations, as I said, this is more related to us. Volcanic ash and how this volcanic ash is going to affect the precipitation. Okay, whether there is going to be a wind gust, whether there is going to be a tornado, all of this can be put to use with the use of radars as such. So you'll see that one of the second uh, say uses of technology as far as uh, uh, weather forecasting is concerned has been done or is being done through uh, weather uh, radar, uh, radar as such. Okay, then we come to the next slide. Uh, this is a very peculiar type of radar. This is uh, DWR. This is the Doppler weather radar. And uh, you'll see that this is something that I had picked from uh, newspapers a few days ago. Uh, you'll see that they have, uh, if, if we read, this is a C-band radar. Okay, this is a C-band radar. This has been fitted in Mumbai. Okay, now the right side of your screen is a news item on Mumbai. And the left side of your screen is a news item from Delhi as such. Okay. Uh, the scope of radar is much, much less as compared to a satellite, but the precision with which it is going to give you information is more, and that's why you use uh, these uh, uh, radars as uh, as such, okay. Doppler radars as they are called. Okay. You'll see that uh, as far as uh, Delhi is concerned, we already have had, they have two radars since in, in, in Delhi in 2010 and 2012 when they have uh, recently got one more as far as mumbai is concerned the second doppler radar uh, which contains the c band k uh, which was to use be used as far as severe weather events in in like thunderstorms or lightning squalls squalls and heavy rainfall in conjunction with other tools and techniques now, you would say that why is it that Mumbai and Delhi is getting it is basically because the risk of loss of life and property in Mumbai and Delhi is going to be higher because of the fact that you are going to have a very high density of population uh, in, in Mumbai and Delhi as such. And that's why uh, the utility is more seen in, in these places as okay. And uh, uh, say, say the impact of this uh, Doppler radars is that uh, they can give you live uh, live streaming sources of uh, uh, information as such. Okay? Within minutes, changes within minutes can be tracked and uh, uh, will be sent to uh, the, 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 the analyzing station where proper uh, correction can immediately be done. Okay, And you'll see that uh, it is covering an area of 450 kilometers around Mumbai. And uh, this is uh, all this was done okay, on 14th January. A commission is like 14th January, okay, which happens to be the 147th uh, foundation day of the IMD. IMD stands for India Meteorological Department. Okay. Then, of course, this is another view of uh, radar and tracking. And of course, at the same time, you have satellites as well. As far as satellites are concerned, there is something important that we have to. Uh, that is that you are going to have different types of satellites which keep on uh, moving around the earth uh, in its own orbit now there are two types of orbits you must have done this in earlier but this orbit this white orbit is actually geosynchronous geostationary orbit or geosynchronous or orbit as it is called and uh, this is called as the polar orbit which is the sun orbit now anybody has read about this and can me can help me with what exactly is a, a geostationary orbit first and then we'll go to the polar orbit as such anybody who has read about this 
because even if you have not read about this, you will be requiring all this in a few days to come. Somebody from BSC, if we have somebody from BSC, you may have done this earlier and you could help me with what is to be uh, explained out of this. Yes, anybody? Geo stationary mahiti nahi kare tumhara. Geo. What does geo mean? Geography. Geo. So geo chai artha yet nahi kare wala no. Geo means earth. Yes, geo means earth. And stationary. Manje ka hai? Tar this, uh, say, this, I am not talking about Satellite is going to move around the earth at the speed of rotation of the earth. That is why at any point of time when you are going to look up into the sky, you will feel that uh, the, uh, the, the satellite has not moved. Actually, it is moving at the speed of the Earth's rotation. The orbit at which it is placed is around 36,000 kilometers. Okay. And you'll see that from there, it keeps on tracking a particular country. Every country is going to have its own satellite. And you'll see that they have given us different names of uh, different countries and their respective uh, satellites as, uh, as such. And they hang up on the uh, say in the sky above the respective country as such, and uh, they continuously keep on giving us information as such. as compared to this, you have uh, uh, say the polar orbit, which is uh, which is situated at around 780 kilometers. Now, why it is placed at 780 kilometers is basically because of the fact that. Uh, uh, it, it operates in one direction only. Manje, say for example, uh, this is the Earth, okay, and this say this is the pole, pole as such. Okay, this is the Earth and this is the pole. Geostationary is going to move like this, okay, along with the Earth, okay, 36,000 kilometers, and you'll see that the speed keeps same. So at any point of time, you will feel that the uh, sat satellite is just monitoring you continuously as such. Polar is that like it it moves like this. Okay, so if the sun, window I am on. So if the sun is coming from this particular side, okay, you'll see that uh, while the Earth rotates, okay, you'll see that the satellite move will move like this throughout the day, and during the night time it will come down and be ready for the next thing. Okay, and the 780 kilometers is at, uh, say it's adjusted in such a way that it will finish its journey in 12 hours, and then next 12 hours it will keep monitoring it on the sun side as such. Okay. Now, it is not necessary that it has to do it on the sun side only. It can do on the other side. Nowadays, you'll see that we have various sensors which are nowadays being used. So, uh, it's not necessary that the sensors need to be photosensitive. Photosensitive in the sense of reflecting sunlight uh, as such. Uh, you can use other sensors also, infrared, ultraviolet and so on and so forth. As such. Okay, So, that is it. And uh, these are some outputs, I would say, in different formats. You'll see this is a direct image. Okay, this is an analyzed image and so on and so forth. Okay, so that is about it. A few more informations as far as this is concerned. Uh, yeah, this is a further explanation of what is a geostationary orbit or geostationary satellite. And this is a polar orbit and polar orbiting as I said. You'll see that it will go down here and then come up from the other side and then again go down and so on and so forth. Okay, you'll see that as far as geo, uh, say as far as polar orbits are concerned, you'll see that it will move like this. Hajo Tumala, say this band. If you are able to see this band, you'll see that it will it will move either now. It, it's it's up to the uh, say say the country or the controlling agency to decide whether it is going to move from south to north or not to south. Normally, it moves from south to north as uh, as such. Okay, there uh, there is some technology with reference to that as such. Okay, so this patch is about the geo, uh, say the polar orbit, and this is the geo station. Okay, okay, now you'll see that in every area you're going to have some uh, satellite which is actually covering this. Now you can, we saw these satellites here. If we just memorize a few from here, let us see. You have the Geos W USA, okay, and then you have the uh, say Geos W means west of USA. Geos, the east is east of US. Okay, so you'll see that it is placed at 75 degrees west longitude, and this is some some I'm not able to see that. Okay, the picture is not clear. 
and then you're going to have different countries having their own satellites as such and uh, you'll see that the output is in that particular way okay you'll see this is geos east okay that this is the area of geos east sorry this is geos east this one and you'll see this is geos west Okay, so they are say they are helping each other, and then you're going to have this Metsat Prime, okay, which is looking into Europe particularly, and then you have this Metsat. Uh, Metsat is basically meteorological satellite, abbreviated SS IODC. This is looking into Asia, okay, and then you have this Metsat further and so on and so forth. So. Uh, geostationary orbits are going to continuously monitor it at the speed of rotation. And uh, as far as polar orbiter is concerned, it is going to move in this particular direction. And what do, what what does the satellite actually look like? Sorry. Okay, this is how it is going to uh, look like. Okay, you see that uh, this is something uh, solar ultraviolet imager. Okay, how what is the ultraviolet SUVR? Okay, what is the amount of ultraviolet rays? Then you would have a magnetometer along the antenna here as such okay extreme ultraviolet and x-ray irradiance center exists as it is called because panel over ecocidal solar ultraviolet and extreme ultraviolet is the geostationary lightening mapper okay is going to be at a particular location of course this is the antenna which continuously keeps on powering the satellite to move around as such this is these are some outputs that are given okay this is cyclone vayu uh, approaching the western coast of india and uh, you'll see that uh, this is actually provided to us. Of course, there are not these lines as such, but the information is provided to us through or via uh, satellites as such. Okay, as far as methods of for weather, weather forecasting are concerned, you have a, a synoptic forecasting method, okay, which is being used and it has been in prominence uh, it was used in uh, prominently till 1950s. Okay, only when satellites came in, it had to be replaced. And then you have numerical or quantitative method of forecasting, and then you have statistical method of forecasting. As such. synoptic, as I've already said, is uh, something that is directly related to observation. You keep on observation, observing, and uh, uh, eventually you start observing actual values also, and that's why that is also called as uh, synoptic forecasting as such numerical or quantitative is you gather these numbers and uh, say you combine those numbers to come up with mathematical models and that models will give you the range of various uh, weather parameters uh, whether it could be temperature whether it could be humidity pressure or even rainfall in the form of precipitation uh, could be understood and decided on the basis of that and then you have statistical method Statistical methods include probable cycles. They run very um, very many cycles as such. Various stati statistical techniques are used as far as analyzing the parameters are concerned. Uh, and, and accordingly, you'll see that uh, these methods are uh, uh, put to use. And, and that is how uh, fair forecasting actually uh, takes place as such. Okay? That is all as far as weather forecasting is concerned. I will stop here. and uh, come back here now uh, there are a few things that uh, i wanted to further discuss with you all i will first stop the recording because it's not going to be related to academic